Rain hammered the rust-pocked roof of my beat-up van like a hundred skeletal fingers. I'd pulled it into the shadow of a collapsed overpass, hoping to blend in with the rest of the urban decay. Not that anyone gave a damn out here. This city wasn't just dead. It was rotting, and me along with it. They used to call this place the heart of manufacturing. Hell, my old man practically wore his steelworker boots to bed, that's how proud he was. Now the factories stood like tombstones, choked with weeds and rust. Desperation was practically in the air, something so thick you could chew on it. A crackle on my ancient shortwave radio jolted me from my grim reverie. Hey, Dex, that you? Sal's voice, tight and crackling with static. Sal was as close to a friend as I had these days. An ex-factory rat like me, but with even less luck. What's the good word, Sal? I answered. A touch of something close to hope tickling my gut. I needed a job. Didn't much matter what, so long as it paid enough to stop my landlord from adding extra padlocks to my door. Got a potential gig. Some suit needs muscle. Sal hesitated. Look, don't ask me how I got tangled with this type, but the payout? It's worth hearing out. Desperation made me reckless. Where and when? He rattled off a location. The edge of the city. Some old plant bought up by a mysterious new biotech outfit. Nothing about it sat right with me, but I'd learned a damn hard lesson over the years. A full stomach didn't care about moral quandaries. I fired up the van, engine wheezing and spitting out grime. Buildings blurred with rain as I navigated cracked streets. At the city limits, the rusted giants of industry gave way to something more unsettling. The plant seemed new, too sterile against the urban rot. Chain-link fences gleamed, topped with fresh razor wire. The guards at the gate made my spine twitch, not your usual renter cops, more like nervous ex-military. A voice squawked as I rolled up. Name? Dex, I offered, trying to hide the unease creeping up my throat. Silence hung heavy before the gates clanged open, and I drove into whatever fresh hell I'd just bought myself into. The van rolled through the gate, and I got my first good look at the place. They'd spruced up the old factory, all smooth new concrete and blinding fluorescent lights in the open areas. But my eye kept being drawn to long, shadowed corridors snaking off into the complex. My ex-factory work sense tingled. Those weren't designed for moving machinery. Too narrow. Too isolated. Park over there! A guard barked, jerking his thumb towards a row of other beat-up vehicles. It seemed the suits didn't just hire edgy muscle. They liked their underlings as desperate as possible. Didn't inspire confidence. The guard escorted me into a stark office. Behind a chipped steel desk sat a guy who looked like he'd never broken a nail in his life. Hair slicked back, suit that probably cost more than I made in a year. Smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Mr. Dex, was it? His voice was smooth as oil, the kind of voice that negotiated on car prices while knowing yours was about to be repossessed. Just Dex is fine, I muttered. The chair they shoved me into creaked in protest under my weight. Fancy suit was already sizing me up. More meat than brains, the type easily bribed or threatened. He wasn't entirely wrong. Excellent. The job is, shall we say, straightforward. He pulled out a contract, ink barely dry. It didn't have many details, just vague stuff about security services and a whole lot of zeros at the payment line. Something in my gut twisted. i dealt with Shady before, but this was organised Shady. The kind that could squash you like a bug and no one would ask questions. Here's the thing, I leaned forward, trying to seem more in control than I felt. What exactly am I securing? Fancy Suit's smile widened, just a bit too much. The future, Dex. We're on the cusp of something big here. Don't concern yourself with... specifics. Sorry, pal. I felt sweat dribbling under my ratty old jacket. I kinda got trust issues, seeing as this town turned its back on the working man and all. Maybe if I played that angle, he'd see me as just another bitter piece of the city's wreckage. He paused, that slick mask giving way to a glint of something harder. 
Progress often requires sacrifice, Dex. This city is dying. Do you want to be the one to give it a jolt back to life or cling to the past until there's nothing left? My old man's face flashed in my mind, coughing up black dust after his final shift. My hands curled into fists. Fancy suit might be talking crap, but I wasn't about to become another casualty of this town's slow death. I signed the damn contract. That night, my dreams were filled with shadows moving in those two narrow corridors, and the subtle glint of eyes that gleamed with a wrong sort of hunger. First shift was... Anticlimactic isn't the right word, but it was more an unsettling kind of quiet than the action-thriller movie vibe I was half expecting. Stationed with another beefy guard named Brick, talk about on the nose. My job was apparently perimeter patrol. This translated to circling an empty patch of old warehouses on the far side of the facility. What am I even looking for? I finally asked Brick, the boredom getting on my nerves worse than any danger could. He grunted, Dunno, man. Some of the fellas on night shift claim there's stuff out here. But I figure boss man pays us extra for hazard duty. Maybe that means we don't gotta actually find the hazard, know what I mean? His lazy cynicism should have reassured me, except his eyes kept darting into the shadows like there was something lurking out there. The security lights made everything seem warped and unreal, as if the buildings themselves were breathing with malevolent intent. By the third hour, I was ready to scream from the monotony and the rising prickle of unease. Finally, a burst of static made me jump. Unit 12 to perimeter. Confirm visual on east fence. A crackly voice called out over the radio. We both spun staring down a long alleyway between decaying structures. At the far end, where the darkness deepened, something was moving. Copy that, Unit 12. Me and Brick are checking it out. I rasped into the radio, suddenly hyper-aware of the weight of the pistol I'd barely learned to fire on my hip. We crept forward, flashlight beams stabbing through the shadows. Something flashed near the fence, like a pale white apparition disappearing behind a broken wall. When we approached, all that remained was a smear of something foul-smelling on the concrete. Not blood. Something thicker. Slicker. Animal, maybe? Brick's voice trembled slightly, though he tried to hide it. City strays could get desperate, or mutated from whatever crap had seeped into this damned city's soil. Yeah, I replied the words sticking in my throat like a lie. An icy tendril of fear twisted in my gut as I shone my light up towards the top of the fence. Razor wire gleamed, and something wet, like whatever had slithered under, was leaving a dripping trail on its way back in. That image haunted me the whole damn shift and made sleep afterward a restless purgatory of twisted shadows and whispering voices just too muffled to understand. My off days didn't bring much ease. Sleep was a fitful battleground, leaving me more exhausted than when I started. And those damn eyes. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Lurking behind a boarded-up window, shifting in the headlights of a passing car. Always just out of view. Paranoia, probably. But paranoia doesn't give you a gut full of acid every time you turn a corner. Shift time rolled around again. That sick dread coiled tight in my chest. But worse than fear was the shame. Here I was, acting like a jumpy kid spooked by his own shadow, all because of some slimy smear and a few bad dreams. My old man would have rolled his eyes. Grit your teeth and get the damn job done, he'd say. Maybe a stiff shot of something cheap and burning before my shift would recreate a shred of that stubborn courage. That night, as I patrolled the same stretch of darkness, that prickling, crawling sense of being watched returned. The air itself seemed heavy, a humid sweatbox that prickled with tension. It wasn't my imagination this time. Something definitely darted along the top of a distant shed. You seeing that too? I breathed into the radio, my voice cracking slightly. Dead silence answered, then static. Brick! My heart hammered a panicked rhythm against my ribs. 
Control, do you copy? Unit 12 needs backup. My voice echoed mockingly in the stillness. Then it came, a rasping, hissing sound that sent ice down my spine. Just the other side of the shed, inhuman eyes glowed dull yellow in the shadows. And the thing they belonged to. God, if I even dared to name what that contorted form reminded me of. Then it launched itself towards me with impossible speed. That first scream was purely animal, fueled by terror I'd never known was inside me. I fumbled for the gun, more useless bravado than real defense. Shots split the night, wild and off target as the... The creature sprang. Teeth gnashed inches from my flesh, reeking of rot and something metallic. Pain tore through my shoulder as I felt claws pierce skin, hot blood blossoming from the wound. I kicked, screamed, a blind force of panic clawing for life. Suddenly searchlights flooded the area, harsh and blinding. Yelling echoed from the main facility, figures converging on our struggle. The weight on me shifted, and through a haze of terror, I saw something flash above, a dark shape with gleaming metal in its hand. There was a sickening thud, a splatter of darkness even blacker than the night, and the hissing rasp turned into a choked gurgle. When the darkness lifted, all that remained was a crumpled heap and an oversized syringe glinting on the concrete. They dragged me through the aftermath like a limp, half-broken doll. Medics barked questions I couldn't answer, their hands slippery with my own blood and something far more foul. Questions spun in my head, each one a sharpened razor against my shattered nerves. What? Who had attacked me? Where had that syringe come from? Why didn't they believe me when I tried to warn them? Brick was nowhere to be found. No one wanted to acknowledge that anyone but me had been on patrol that night. Fear morphed into a new form hot and bitter, fueled by adrenaline. They were covering this up, erasing evidence. They thought I was delusional, a panicked grunt, seeing things in the shadows. Fury hardened inside me, a desperate clawing against the encroaching fog of exhaustion. A sharp sting in my arm cut through the haze. Someone shoved a nondescript pill down my throat, forced me to swallow water the way you might hydrate a stubborn pet. This'll help you relax, Dex, a blurry face in a white coat murmured. His smile was thin, clinical. They weren't going to just heal me and dismiss me. They meant to keep me here, locked down and labelled unstable. My injured shoulder throbbed like it was on fire. But within that haze of pain, a cold ember of clarity sparked. I couldn't let them contain me. Whatever was waiting for me in the corners of this place, I knew it was worse than what lurked outside. Suddenly, I lurched up, spitting out the damn pill in one smooth motion. They might underestimate a broken-down factory worker, but survival leaves you with a few dirty tricks. Chaos erupted as I stumbled over, shoving aside a surprised nurse with my good arm. The throbbing agony turned into a primal motivator, every step a silent scream of defiance. Bursts of shouting followed me. I moved like a wounded animal, clumsy, unpredictable. Every turn was a gamble. They knew this place, I didn't. But desperation lent me focus. An open service door beckoned, a promise of shadows far kinder than the fluorescent glare of the facility. I slipped out, heart a frantic drum roll against my ribs. Concrete gave way to rough soil, and then there was darkness. The welcome abyss that meant, at least, for now, they couldn't see me. The wound burned. My breath came in ragged gasps, but I kept going. The city shimmered under a half-moon, broken yet familiar. In its shadows, I might find shelter, or more trouble. Didn't matter. At least out here, in the decaying ruins, I understood. Maybe I had a fighting chance. Every muscle screamed in protest with each ragged step. I stumbled along gutted back streets, familiar territory in unfamiliar ways. Usually I kept to the semi-lit paths, avoided deserted blocks out of ingrained caution. Now it was the shadows that were my salvation. That burning in my shoulder wasn't going away. More than blood loss, there was a sickening rhythm at the wound, 
as if what tore into me left something nasty behind. Fear was my fuel, and I wasn't sure how much longer it'd keep this ragged body going. An abandoned corner store, shattered windows, empty shelves, offered sanctuary. Inside, my scavenging instincts awoke. Rotten canned goods were out. Broken bottles wouldn't help if someone followed. What I needed, an old sweatshirt, grimy but still halfway intact. That and the store's busted first aid kit. Rummaging in the shattered debris, I felt a familiar sting of bitterness. Turns out I wasn't so different from the strays clinging to survival in this decaying world. Dirty bandages wouldn't stop whatever infected my wound, but ripping the sweatshirt into strips brought a grim measure of control. Pressure eased the burning slightly, giving me time to think rather than simply react. They would be searching. Not just for me, but for answers. What happened tonight was unnatural. Not a product of urban decay, but of deliberate creation. Had those things always been lurking in the facility? Or were they changing me? Cold realization coiled in my gut. Those eyes staring at me from the darkness hadn't seemed hungry. They felt calculating. Had someone deliberately unleashed whatever attacked me to... test it? My head swam, but a new purpose flared within the haze. It wasn't enough to just run. If things like that were roaming the city, others might already be hurt, hunted. No one would miss me. No one would care. It made me the perfect weapon. The expendable grunt who might actually survive long enough to uncover what was lurking beneath the veneer of slick suits and empty promises. From the back of the store, I spied a rusted fire escape clinging precariously to the brick wall. A risky climb, but less so than stumbling at ground level, leaving an easy blood trail to follow. The metal groaned under my weight, but somehow held. From the roof, I had a new view. The city as a sprawling graveyard, with the gleaming lights of the facility as a beacon of twisted secrets in the heart of it. A wave of dizziness crashed over me. Sleep wasn't an option, at least not yet. Not until I found a place far from their reach, long enough to regain my strength and decide, was I going to stay hunted or become the hunter? Dawn stained the cityscape a sickly grey, highlighting the desolation like a fading bruise. My movements were jerky, a painful puppet with fraying strings. The world kept tilting unpleasantly, forcing me to find a hidden corner, less shelter, more of a tomb to collapse within. Every instinct told me staying exposed was suicide. They knew I was out there, and this time it wouldn't be just rent -a cops in pursuit. An old tenement building hunched on the corner once teeming with life, now sealed up and forgotten. With a strained heave, I forced a cracked basement window. Musty darkness offered sanctuary, the chill against my fever-damp skin a grimly welcome relief. It felt like burrowing into my own grave, fitting in a morbid sort of way. Time warped in that subterranean hollow. I drifted in and out of a restless twilight, punctuated by nightmares born from a blend of exhaustion and whatever was festering in my wound. In my delirious visions, the tattered bandages unraveled to reveal not skin, but something different. Scales instead of pores, limbs twitching with unnatural grace. Was this what they wanted to turn me into? Their experiment, loose in the ruins. Jolting awake was a fresh torment. The fever clung relentlessly, turning every swallow, every ragged breath, into a miniature battle. Outside, footsteps and muffled voices filtered down, searchers. For a panicky second, I imagined them prying my hiding spot open, dragging me like a specimen under the harsh daylight. Then the sounds faded, replaced by the maddening drip of leaky pipes. They'd abandoned their random sweep, opting for something more focused, or given up, deeming me already dead. Either way, it offered a chance. The wound throbbed in furious time with the pulse pounding in my temples. If there was an ounce of stubborn grit still inside me, this was the moment to channel it. Slowly, agonizingly, I forced myself to my feet. Every movement made nausea ripple through me. 
but there was a new desperation fueling me. They thought I wouldn't survive. Whatever poison was working its way through my veins, they believed it'd be cleaner that way. No loose ends, no evidence. Well, damn them. If they wanted to see a monster unleashed on the city, I'd give them a different one than they bargained for. I wasn't a test subject, a lab rat to be studied and destroyed. I was Dex, born tough in the belly of this rotten world, and now reborn amidst its ruins. Something monstrous bloomed in that dank basement, something fueled by fury brighter than the fever, something ready to turn the tables. Night fell again. Its cover seemed thinner here within the city's choked embrace, more a shroud than actual concealment. It wasn't safe outside, but it was never safe, only different measures of unsafe. My fever-warped mind saw every bit of refuse as a potential hiding spot for eyes not quite human. Each flash behind a boarded-up window seemed like a creature stalking its prey. The city itself breathed with a predatory intent. They hadn't found me. Yet. My scavenged corner store first aid kit was a pitiful defense against whatever festered in my wound. Yet within that festering was a strange kind of... Vigor. My ragged breaths grew deeper, and my muscles, though leaden with poison, flexed with a resilience that shocked me. The transformation seemed less monstrous in the pale moonlight, more... adaptive. My body was taking what they'd intended for my destruction and using it to fight back. But surviving wasn't enough. Not anymore. They needed to be stopped. Their facility, whatever they were creating there, if I could expose it, break its rotten heart, maybe that would turn back the monstrous tide creeping into the city. I, with my tainted blood and grim purpose, was perhaps the only weapon capable of striking from within the shadows they reveled in. My path back was circuitous, clinging to alleys, scaling debris, a feral phantom through the urban decay. It felt less like the city I knew and more like a battlefield, where the rules shifted hourly. Hunger gnawed, yet there was no scavenging tonight. Any distraction could mean getting caught, or worse, leading those things back to places honest folks still scraped out a desperate existence. As I approached the facility, unease coiled like a cold serpent in my gut. Each step brought back the echoing clang of the gate, the scent of unnatural fear. Then I saw her a brief movement outside the perimeter fence. Someone slim, nimble, moving not like a hunted thing, but with purposeful stealth. A woman, hair catching the faint starlight, dressed in worn leathers and moving with the predatory grace that was becoming eerily familiar. Before fear could freeze me, she sensed my presence. She spun, a blur of motion, hand darting for something in the folds of her clothing, in the dimness, I couldn't make out a weapon, yet every bone in my body thrummed with alarm. Who the hell are you? Her voice, rough with suspicion, cut through the night. In the tense silence that followed, I realized two things. I had the advantage of surprise, and more worryingly, that monstrous vigor coursing through me made me excited by the prospect of a brawl. Survival wasn't just adapting anymore, it was evolving into something sharp and maybe a little bit thrilling. The taut energy snapped. In that heartbeat between predator and prey, between curiosity and conflict, it wasn't fear but a strange exhilaration that fueled me. This woman wasn't some flustered suit or trigger-happy guard. In her tense focus, I saw a mirror of my own grim determination. Perhaps even more dangerous, I saw a hint of desperation. Let's just say I got an unfinished score to settle with whoever's inside, I managed, keeping my voice low and my battered form partially concealed by shadows. It felt wrong to hide, wrong to play some terrified pawn. A fresh wave of pain ripped through my injured shoulder, a brutal reminder that weakness still lingered. It wouldn't do me any favours, but that poison coursing through me. Maybe that wasn't all weakness either. She studied me, the moonlight limbing the harsh lines of her face. 
In the darkness, her eyes glinted with a feral luminescence that made my infected blood sing in response. They hurt you. It wasn't a question. That, and messed with things no man should play God with, I admitted. There was a rawness to my voice, a ragged urgency that surprised even me. I was used to keeping my head down, not revealing the desperation clawing at me on the inside. But facing this woman, alone and in the belly of the beast, there was no room for pretense. She stepped closer, a faint rasping in her breath that I wasn't sure was entirely human. Name's Anya, she offered. It was a name as hard and stark as the world we now faced. And if you're against those bastards too, they got themselves another enemy. In her words, in that fierce offer of grudging solidarity, there was a terrible relief. My instincts, sharpened now by whatever brood in my veins, told me she wasn't just running errands for whoever controlled the facility. Anya had her own fight, her own scars from this damn place. Dex, I replied, and in that simple exchange of names, there lay not trust, but an acknowledgement of common purpose, an uneasy alliance forged in the desperate night. So, I shifted, pushing down a wave of pain. I might just be able to get us inside. Her eyes narrowed in predatory fascination. Do tell. She lowered herself into a fighting crouch, her body a coiled spring in the shadows. But if you try anything fancy, I promise you'll regret it before. Whatever they did to you finishes the job. In her threat, there was no trace of pity, only cold pragmatism. A twisted smile briefly broke through my exhaustion. The night air thrummed with a tense excitement mixed with fear, and that warped exhilaration again. I was hardly healed. The poison was both weapon and torment, but neither was Anya a picture of perfect health. In the shadows of the city, beneath the monstrous secrets of the gleaming facility, it was us, the broken, the changed, the survivors, who might just turn the tide. In this battle, being a monster might be the only way to make a damn difference. Anya proved to be unsettlingly good at infiltration. Where I was all raw fury and clumsy desperation, she moved with deliberate, eerie grace. I caught glimpses of scars, old ones, poorly treated, running jagged across her knuckles and creeping out from under her ragged sleeves. Each mark whispered of forgotten fights and desperate escape attempts. There was no way those came just from life on the streets. Our entry point wasn't anything dramatic. She knew a section of the fence with lax security, where a well-aimed rotting tree trunk became a ramp. The climb sent fire through my wound, but pride and some unnatural resilience fought back the groan that would have given us away. Inside, the change was unnerving. Tonight, the halls weren't deserted corridors. They buzzed with nervous energy. Guards doubled up, scientists scurried between sealed labs, eyes darting with controlled panic. Something had spooked them good. My lips curled into a grim smile. Maybe our little clash earlier hadn't been as unnoticed as I'd first feared. Keep your head down, factory rat! Anya hissed, her voice barely a whisper near my ear. She smelled of old leather and something distinctly wild those shiny boxes on the walls. She jerked her chin upward at a security camera. Might be dumber than the grunts outside, but no need to invite trouble. We slunk along, two shadows merging with the facility's veins. My vision swam at times, the pulse in my wound echoing through every step. My body seemed to be at war with itself, poisoned and yet empowered in ways I barely understood. Anya, surprisingly, didn't question it. Perhaps her path into this place had been equally unusual. I remembered my old patrol route, the blind spots it intentionally had. Those areas weren't mere neglect. They were designed to hide things. I led us towards them, driven by something beyond conscious thought. My senses flared, an oily, chemical tang mingling with a coppery scent that made my infected blood prickle strangely. This way. Now. We rounded a corner and stopped short. Cages. 
Huge, heavy-set things lined a darkened corridor, most of them thankfully empty. Yet in one, silhouetted against the faint backlights, hunched a hulking form. Even dormant, it radiated menace. Anya went completely still beside me, eyes narrowed to dangerous slits. Her own scent grew sharper, charged with a strange mix of revulsion and fascination. What the hell? she murmured, then bit her lip for breaking the silence. We flattened ourselves against the wall, hoping invisibility was better defense than open combat. This thing, hunched shoulders too broad, limbs unnaturally long, wasn't the same as what attacked me out in the wasteland. This was refined, engineered, a weapon in a cage. The creature made a soft guttural sound, almost a questioning, hungry whimper. My skin prickled as it slowly turned its head. Eyes glinted in the gloom, and I felt a jolt I couldn't fully explain. Recognition. Not of myself as an individual, but as something akin. It could sense what I'd become. We were creatures of the same poisoned well. Monstrous mirrors born from the dark hearts of this dying city. And for all its grotesque, twisted form, I'll admit I felt a warped hint of pity. A burst of startled shouts shattered the tense silence. Flashlights lanced down the corridor, blinding us momentarily. Anya reacted first, dragging me backwards with a hiss of frustration. The caged creature screeched, the grating sound like claws against my nerves. It lunged, but the bars held. Intruders! A guard yelled, fear sharpening his voice. Sector 7! Possible containment breach! His panicked announcement triggered a cascading alarm. Klaxons blaring, heavy doors clanking shut, sealing us in. Containment breach. So not only did they manufacture monsters, they were losing control too. Panic rose like bile in my throat. If we were pawns to these bastards, that creature was their pet gone rogue. We were trapped with a predator unleashed. My injured shoulder throbbed in violent rhythm with the alarm's insistent beat. We gotta move, I barked at Anya, the desperate need for action cutting through the pain. The corridor ahead blurred, as if my infected blood saw paths my normal eyes couldn't. Every instinct screamed that the source of my mutation lay deeper in the facility. Answers waited there, and maybe even more weapons like the one in that cage. Anya studied me for an unsettlingly long moment before giving a feral grin. You know where you're going, factory rat. Don't leave me out of the fun. Her eyes shimmered in the gloom. A predator anticipating the chaos, not fearing it. We moved in a frantic, adrenaline fueled dance through the dimly lit facility. Security was a chaotic whirlwind now. Shouts, scrambling footsteps, fear and adrenaline painting a chaotic landscape. My strength surged and waned, leaving me winded and disoriented. But whenever I stumbled, Anya was there, her wiry strength steadying me. This wasn't friendship or trust, not by a long shot. It was the warped kinship of shared purpose, born in the shadows of a place designed to play God and instead birth horrors. Deeper inside, that pounding instinct hammered like a frantic metronome. Every metallic tang, Every choked-off, inhuman screech we passed hinted at both the poison and its potential. This facility wasn't just some factory. It was a grotesque forge, spitting out nightmares from warped genes and shattered ethics. Then, a lab. Frosted glass obscured the inside, but those same primal instincts said this was it. Anya paused, sensing the same significance. An unspoken exchange passed between us. If something in there could help turn the tide, it was worth facing whatever horror awaited inside. Maybe it would explain my own monstrous changes, the poison and the purpose that simmered just beneath. As one, we slammed through the door. The sight left me breathless, not from exertion, but from a strange mix of morbid wonder and grim realization. Rows of vats, glowing with unnatural hues, hummed with potent energy. Strange machines lined the walls, blinking with cold, uncaring intelligence. It was a Frankensteinian landscape, where nature was nothing but raw material, twisted and reshaped under the guise of cold progress. 
The focus of the nightmare lay on a stark metal table, a human figure, but monstrously altered, hooked up with tubes and sensors. This wasn't the frantic struggle of transformation, but something more deliberate, controlled. Then I saw the face on the slab contorted in agony and knew it was Brick. Seeing Brick in that lab twisted something dark and bitter inside me. He'd been a decent sort, even under the cloud of desperation that haunted us all. Turns out, that decency and desperation had gotten him used, twisted into... this. Anger turned my infected blood to molten lead, pounding through me in sync with the frantic alarm still echoing through the facility. Anya was faster to draw connections. They said, has a duty, she ground out, voice rough with disgust and rage. Didn't mean we was the lab rats. She surged across the sterile floor, hands slamming down on control panels I barely understood. Lights blinked erratically, and in the brief strobe-like effect, the sight burned itself into my brain. Brick wasn't just restrained, he was being fused with whatever machine surrounded him. This wasn't the quick transformation I'd suffered. It was the slow, tortuous refinement of a monstrous weapon. There wasn't time for grief, only fury. With an echoing bang, Anya pried open an emergency panel. Inside, wires glowed like sick arteries. I ain't any tech head, she grimaced but ripping out the right bit might at least stall this hellish contraption. Before I could argue, she grabbed a handful of the writhing wires. A scream echoed through the room, raw and agonizing, but it wasn't hers. My infected shoulder ached in sympathetic agony as Brick's shudder rippled through his mutated body, the restraint straining against his twitches. I knew it was cruel, Yet the flare of pain meant they hadn't fully stripped away his humanity. There might be just enough left to salvage. Dex! Anya snapped through gritted teeth, sweat beading her brow. Get him loose, I'll buy you time! With a final guttural cry, she tore out another cluster of wires. Alarms surged, then abruptly fizzled, plunging half the lab into darkness. That twisted sense in my own mutated blood surged again. It guided my trembling hands to the restraints release switches, not out of tech knowledge, but a strange kind of instinct forged in the same vile experiments. As Brick slumped with a ragged moan, I grabbed his oversized arm, pulling. This wasn't rescue, not yet. It was an unholy alliance forged in pain, one desperate monster hauling another out of the depths of this hellish lab. Explosions boomed from down the hall, Guards finally catching up. Anya darted ahead, pulling a weapon I was only half certain I wanted to identify from her back. This way! She snarled. And even while part of me recoiled in horror, another thrummed in dark understanding. Whatever lay ahead, we were past the point of being human prey. Now, we were the shadows with teeth. And damn it! Maybe that was the strength we needed to cut through the heart of this nightmare. Anya ran like a demon through the halls, her eerie grace amplified in the chaos. We moved as a grotesque trio, Dex the battered ex-worker, Anya the lean hunter, and behind us, Brick, a hulking symphony of agony and confusion. His altered biology had given him terrifying resilience. Guard's bullets sparked ineffectually off his thickened skin, buying us precious time. Yet, with every lurching step, I saw flashes of the man Brick had been in his tortured eyes. Somehow, beneath the monstrous surface, there was a terrified part of him fighting to pull free from the biotech company's control. His was a strength born of distortion, yet I saw desperation mirroring my own. We were all victims, twisted but not yet fully broken. Then, we burst into what could only be described as a control centre. Consoles blinked wildly and displays showed scenes of horrifying mutations contained within sealed chambers. My stomach lurched. Brick was merely a prototype, a stepping stone to worse horrors unleashed on the city. Anya, can you... I choked on the words, unsure how to turn these machines that spawned darkness into a weapon against their creators. But with a feral grin, Anya had already lunged for the controls. 
She wasn't a delicate technician. Her tools were raw strength and brutal practical skill. With a screech of stressed metal, she wrenched one panel open, showering the room in sparks. I felt an echo of that electrical energy shoot through my mutated veins, an unsettling reminder of the link between me and whatever brewed in this place. Monitors flared. Sealed doors within the compound burst open with a chilling hiss. Inhuman screeches, echoing Brick's own tortured roars, rippled through the facility. But unlike his despair, this was a frenzy of creatures starved for freedom, and likely, vengeance. The guards on our tail froze, then their voices rose in panic. A few turned to fight the surging wave of monstrous forms, others were simply torn apart. For a brief moment as I surveyed the ensuing chaos, the thought wasn't one of triumph, but of terrible pity. They had played God, and now faced the wrath of their own monstrous creations. Brick whimpered. For all his altered brawn, the sight of his twisted kind surging forward shattered something within him. Yet a glimmer of raw cunning burned through the agony in his eyes. He let out a guttural cry that turned into a ragged series of sounds. Were those... orders? Were these creatures capable of being something more than rampaging beasts? The surge of monstrous mutants spilled from shadowed corridors. For a terrifying moment, they seemed to pause as one, torn between blind hunger and Brick's halting commands. Their hesitation allowed us, a macabre alliance of the warped and the wounded, to slip past. Brick covered our retreat, holding back the monstrous tide with the same terrifying yet hesitant authority he'd once obeyed. In the chaos, my eyes fell on a lone figure, a scientist, pale-faced and shaking, staring in despair at the unleashed consequences of his work. And there, on his desk, sat a bulky case marked Project Phoenix. Files, hard drives, the damning proof the city desperately needed. Survival could and should mean more than just escaping with our miserable lives. Anya! I gasped pointing frantically. That case! We need it! As one, we plunged towards the abandoned desk amidst the escalating carnage. We were past fear, past humanity, fueled solely by the primal need to not just survive, but to make these bastards pay for what they'd unleashed upon us, upon the city, upon themselves. Anya reached the desk first, a predator honed by desperation. The scientist recoiled from her feral lunge, scrambling on the floor like a cornered rat. He snatched desperately at the case, but Anya swiped it with a snarl, securing it under her arm as if it were a lifeline. And for all I knew, maybe it was. Suddenly the room blurred. I staggered, every transformed nerve jangling in agonized disarray. My body wasn't just my own anymore. It twitched in strange communion with the monstrous horde tearing through the facility. Brick's cries grew ragged, and his control on his twisted kin slipped. Panic cut through my warped exhilaration. It wouldn't hold for long. We gotta go now! Anya snapped. The case clutched protectively in her grip. She wasn't wrong. Our grotesque alliance with Brick and his monstrous pack could unravel within seconds. But as we turned to flee, movement snagged my eye, something glinting on the floor where the scientist had fallen. An ID badge, photo clear even in the chaos. Dr. Ainsley, Director of Research. No more an ivory tower academic playing with dangerous toys. Now just as vulnerable as any of us in the belly of the beast he'd birthed. A wave of dark satisfaction washed over me. No way he'd disappear easily. Not when those creatures roamed freely because of him. My vision clouded, a wave of monstrous instinct urging one final act. It wouldn't bring justice, wouldn't undo what they'd done, but it would serve a brutal kind of closure. One more monstrous deed before escaping this nightmare. Driven by a surge of cold fury, I tore the ID badge from the unresisting scientist. No words, just a raw exchange of gazes. Me, with eyes a little too luminescent in the gloom, and him, with the stark terror of a man suddenly understanding the consequences of his actions. 
I lunged towards the monstrous wave, the thrum of their brutal intent like a drumbeat guiding my path. In a terrifying act of trust, they parted as I approached, revealing an empty corridor, a potential path to escape. They might tear me to shreds, might unleash that terrible hunger once more, but I'd used my warped link to buy us a few more desperate seconds. Dex! What in the hell are you doing? Anya choked out, eyes a mix of horror and understanding. With a grim twist of a smile, I tossed the ID towards Brick. Evening, the odds a little! I barked over the rising crescendo of monstrous shrieks. Ainsley wasn't getting any pity-fueled escapes today. If any of us made it out, it'd be through our own brutal cunning, not mercy. With the badge in hand, Brick let out a commanding bellow that was all too human in its despair. The surge reversed, turning away from us and flooding towards the trapped Dr. Ainsley. With one last backward glance at the unfolding carnage, Anya and I sprinted towards the now open hallway. Behind us, Dr. Ainsley's screams mixed with the triumphant snarls of the creatures he'd birthed. And while a small part of me wondered if this monstrous justice solved anything, a larger part was already moving on, fueled by a burning need to find some sliver of the outside world that this nightmarish facility hadn't yet touched. It wasn't over. Hell, it had barely begun.